Well, good morning, everybody. Um, obviously, um, have a big, big one this Sunday, um, playing a really good uh, um, West Virginia team. Uh, they're coming off of a great win at Kansas and did it without two starters. And uh, we're still banged up as we have been most of the year. And um, so we're, we're trying to navigate that. I, I gave, uh, gave the kids a couple of days off this week, coming back from Iowa state. That was a uh, pretty quick turnaround, as you know, and if you watch the game. We obviously, I, I thought they played really well. I knew they would. Um, uh, I thought coach Finley had his group ready to go and, and, uh, and I didn't have my group ready, but sometimes, sometimes you know those things are going to happen. There's just nothing you can do about it. We were, you know, it was four games in a really short period of time for us. Obviously, a quick turnaround from Saturday to Monday. Um, we've got four guards playing three positions, so that's a bit of a challenge. Um, you know, we 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 competed and did I thought the best we could do, but we I think we were a tired group. And uh, so we took a couple of days off this week, got back after it yesterday. Uh, hopefully we'll have a good day today and tomorrow and, and get ready for Sunday. This time of year is always challenging. We got recruiting. Uh, I was gone um, Tuesday and I'll be gone again this evening. And, and uh, my staff's been out all week, but it's playoff time. And um, obviously it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Recruiting is 24 7, 365. So um, we've got coaches everywhere right now. And then um, so we've got to get a team ready to go and um, get to play, obviously, a really good West Virginia team. I thought when we beat them up there, we beat a really good team. Um, they're well coached, they're athletic, they can shoot it. Um, and so uh, it just, uh, you know, we're going to have to play well on Sunday for sure. It's a big weekend. We've got alumni weekend. We're expecting over 50 former players back. We'll have dinner with them Saturday night. I'm really excited about seeing everybody and finally being able to have a conversation with people face to face. And, and again, um, appreciate their, their coming back and spending time with our kids. I think our kids need to know the history of this program and, and those that have gone before them. And, and this will be a great opportunity for them. We'll start with Danny and then Corey. Um, Vic, uh, first, is there a, a Sonya update? And then kind of going off that, at this point of the year with this weekend, next week, is it almost to a point where rest is just about as important as practice time for this team? Well, it is for us right now, Danny, just because of our, our situation with being down, you know, basically our leading scorer in Sonya. Um, you know, the answer is she's – you know, day to day, um, she was better yesterday, but still didn't practice. Uh, Rosie's working really hard with her right now, and uh, we're we're trying to get her back. But I mean, it it's going to take some time. So, um, you know, that being said, uh, playing playing, you know, the, with the depth issues that we have, and and uh, you know, the other night. It, when you when you don't play well and you're looking down the bench and there's nobody else down there, I mean it's uh, uh, there's just not another option and and you're trying to you know you're trying to impart that to your kids too. Hey guys, we we can't afford to have an off night. Certain players have to play well every night for us to have a chance to win. And um, you know we just we had a lot of off nights the other night, but again I I attribute that to just some, some real fatigue. And uh, I don't quite understand the schedule, Danny, to be honest with you. It makes no sense to me. We we haven't had a bye in our schedule. And this week's really not our bye, Danny. We don't have a midweek game because we had to play on Monday night. Next week is our bye. And I didn't even realize we didn't have a midnight, midweek game next week till somebody told me yesterday. So that takes us almost to the end of the season. Our buy for our kids 
is February in the twenties. Now that's got a, that's got a, that's a problem for me. That's got a little stench to it. You know what I mean? Our buy is between our last two games. So we're going to play 16 straight in the big 12 before we get a buy. Makes no sense. But due to our injury situation, um, you know, this week, it's good that we've had a couple of days to try to get a little bit healthier. But in any other year, I'd be wondering, what are we doing? You know, it just doesn't make any sense to wait this long to give a team a bye. You can't tell me that scheduling is that difficult, that you can't give everybody a fair bye during the course of a conference season and not wait until their last two games? Come on. And then, Vic, are you are you concerned? How concerned are you about the free throw shooting? And what do you attribute that to? Is that bad form? Is that fatigue? What what do you kind of attribute those struggles to? I attribute that to toughness. I mean, free throws, you got to want to be there. And, you know, it is, I'm, am I concerned? Absolutely. We work, we worked on it yesterday. I took 15 minutes out of practice, 15 minutes to spend on pressure free throws. And, you know, the whole thing is you got to want to be there and it's muscle memory. We shoot, we make them shoot 50 a day. You know, they got to make 50 a day at some point, either before or after practice. We don't make them, but we encourage them to do that. And it just, it's, to me, it's a toughness thing. You, it, it's a free throw. I mean, that's been playing basketball a long time. You got to step up there and want to be there and got to make your free throws. It's probably the, the worst free throw shooting team I've had in a long time. Maybe ever. Court. Yeah, coach, I just wanted to talk to you about the defense and how uh, y'all are undefeated when you hold teams under 59 points. But do you think with this lack of depth that could affect on the defensive end when it comes to fatigue and stuff like that and then uh, maybe lead to these losses? You know, I, we're not pressing a whole lot. You know, it's not like we're – we're trying to press a lot. I mean, we we pressed a little bit the other night at Iowa State, but sometimes you got to do that just to create the atmosphere, especially when you're at home, and then to get your kids to play hard. And um, but over the course of the season, this team's probably pressed less than any team I've ever had. So um our defensive issues. I mean, I know what the stats say, but I know what I'm looking at every day, and we still are a work in progress. We're we got a lot of things to meet. In my mind, we got a lot of things to fix on that end, and one of them is y'all heard me, you know, compare myself to a plumber. You know, you get one leak fixed, you got another one over here, and it, it you're trying to you're trying to get all those, you know hold everybody accountable you were at practice yesterday same deal you know you got two or three playing really hard but you always find the one or two that aren't and um you know i'm an accountable growth coach i'm going to hold you accountable i don't think you're playing hard i'm going to address that um and and those are things that i think we've got to you know we're continuing to coach in february is how hard you have to play defensively and what it takes to win. Our, our goal board is five charges a night. This is a great example. We took six on Saturday, six. I don't think we took one Monday. Now, how does that happen? You know, two weeks ago, we play the same team we played Monday night. I think we had 10 fouls called against us. Monday night, they, you know, we had 25 called against us. I, I, it, it just doesn't wash with me. It don't make sense. And, and part of that's not on our kids, by the way. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to ask you about, Coach, was the alumni game. What is the importance of that and bringing 
uh, over 30 or 40 former players to the game. That's really special. Um, you know, we haven't been able to have those folks back because of COVID. And, um, you know, I, I, have abs- I absolutely have an appreciation for all those former players here and know what their accomplishments have been and what they've meant to the history of this program. And I want our kids to have that too. I want them to understand uh, and, and have a chance to put a face with a name. You know, they see a lot of these people up and down our hallways here. Uh, I think we've done an unbelievable job of memorializing and honoring our former players. There's more former players pictures up and down the hallway here in the practice facility than, than, than I have of, of our current team or the past two seasons. Um, and, and so uh, I think it'll give our kids a chance to put a face with a name and have a have a chance to have a, a real conversation with them. And at the same time, give our, our former players a chance to get to know our kids. We have some great kids. I mean, this team is full of great kids, great personalities. Um, they're a lot of fun to be around. Um, and, and so it's going to give them a, a real insight into this team and, and, uh, and uh, who they are. So I'm excited about that. Thanks, Corey. Uh, Roger? Vic, with all, all that you've been through when you left Moody after the South Florida game, Aaliyah, Rory, Taylor, Sonia, is there some satisfaction that you're you're sitting here heading into the stretch run tied for first? <laughs> yeah, I think I said this the other day. I think if, if you would have told me at Christmas, hey, Vic, relax. On February 17th, you're going to be tied for first in the Big 12. I'd have probably said, okay, I'll see you then, Um, you know, and just bypassed it all. Uh, And and so I I do. And, and, you know, I, I wrote that on the board uh, down in the locker room Tuesday. We, they knew they had the day off Wednesday was a surprise. And I wrote it on the board down in their locker room. I said, Hey, you know, have a great day. Enjoy your day off. You're first in the big 12 as of February 15th, live it. And I want our kids to live it. I want them to embrace it, but I think you have to be careful because some kids can, can, can function in that environment and, and some might not be able to. And so for us, I think we're going to focus on process, not outcome. Instead of talking about, championship we just need to focus on west virginia right now who has your ear to say who has your ear to say relax (laughs) uh who has your ear to say relax why particular assistant (laughs) yeah no nobody uh in in in, but i just think you you know for us in this team this particular team this group we probably need to focus on process over in result and so that's what we're going to try to do. We're just going to talk about West Virginia. We get through Sunday. We got a whole nother week till we play at Oklahoma on Saturday. And um, and so uh, we'll 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 kind of you know try to focus on this because if we don't, you, you y'all heard me talk about climbing the mountain. If you start focusing on the top, you're going to miss a rung on the ladder and fall all the way down to the bottom. And so uh, I think for us, we. We've got to, we've got to do that. We've got to focus on process right now. Harry, Thanks. morning, coach. So you had mentioned that uh, you know against Iowa, you didn't you didn't feel that you had the team prepared, and then you talked about you know you didn't you don't think some of this is on the players. And I'm some, I'm curious. I, I'm assuming you're taking that ownership of you know for your team. What are you doing differently to get them prepared, and then? Um, going after West Virginia, you have a battle in Oklahoma that probably will be uh, one of the most epic battles for first place. And so I'm curious your take on that as well. Well, in, in regards to Iowa State, when I when I talk about, you know, I thought they were ready. I thought Iowa State really came out and was ready to go. Um, we came out and we weren't ready to go. And, you know, at the end of the day, that falls on me. I got to have my team ready. When the ball gets jumped up and tipped, we got to be ready to play. 
So, you know, it took out, we, we kind of battled back the whole night. We got down 22 to 11 and then y'all, we win the rest of the game, 50 to 44. You, you add up the second, third and fourth quarter, we win the game, but you can't start out down 11. And, and so I thought they punched first. We've been pretty good at that all year, but I thought they punched first. And, and so I have to, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be accountable for that. And, uh, and so, but again, like I said, sometimes you can see things coming and there's just nothing you can do about it. And our kids, when I go back and watch that film on the flight home, we were a step slow all night long. You know, offensively, we were slow, we're stagnant. Uh, we couldn't, we wouldn't turn the floor. Y'all, we had 22 offensive rebounds. Now, that's, they ain't just standing there getting those. You're, you're having to put yourself in that position and you're getting them. You know how many fouls were called on our stick backs? How many times we went to the free throw line on 22 offensive rebounds? Wasn't very many. And so, again, some of this is out of our control. And it's frustrating for me, I can tell you. Um, but in, in your margin for error on the road, y'all, is so small. So small. And so, you know, it's uh, unless you've got that, you know, that that real dominating team, um, sometimes it's hard to overcome the things that we're having to overcome. And Monday night, it was just a combination of things. It was fourth game in, you know, eight days, I think. It was on, you know, on the road, one day of prep, coming off of a game on Saturday. Uh, you're, you're playing a wounded team in Iowa State who had dropped three in a row, and um, they're playing to help Finley win his 750th game. I mean, there's just a lot of things going on there in that equation that are working against you. And then, you know, we're down our leading score, and we got four guards to play three position, and they're a guard-oriented team. And, and you know, you're asking, you're, you know, as I told my staff, Two things. One, Rory Harmon taking 21 shots, y'all, that's not good. She doesn't need to be taking 21 shots, but she had to the other night um, because we didn't have a whole lot of other options uh, with some of our other other guards uh, because they, were, they weren't very aggressive. Then the second thing is you're asking Deanna Gaston to not only play offense, rebound, but now you're asking her to go defend an All-American, and I'm not sure she's ready to do that. That's a big load for her. And and so, um, you know, it's just – it's it's our team right now, y'all. This is where we are, and uh, we've got to be better. I've got to, you know, make sure we're better. And, again, these are great kids. But I think we're still a work in progress. We're still developing toughness. We're still – developing a competitive spirit that when things get hard, that's when it's just right for us. You know, that's how my teams have always been. When it gets hard, that's when it gets just right for us. I'm not sure that's the case with this team right now. Well, it sure makes for some exciting women's basketball, that's for sure. Well, thank you. I hope we can hope we can keep it exciting for you. Thanks, Terry. Uh, Elijah? Yeah, uh, good morning, Coach. So I just wanted to talk real quick about the upcoming 10K for 10K game. Um, last year, the team did the same initiative. It raised over 100, 100 grand with match donations. So I guess what did you see from last year from either like the fans, the team, or benefits of the program that made you decide it was worth doing it again this year? Well, um, again, I think I've mentioned it to this group before. Last year, I was frustrated with our attendance. Um, felt like our team deserved better. And, um, you know, I, I kind of had challenged our fan base and then, uh, I wanted, I did it for our three seniors, you know, uh, I just wanted them to go out in a, with a bang and, uh, wanted them to have an opportunity to really experience a, a great atmosphere. And, um, and so we, we, we kind of, we made, you know, we made that offer and, and the next thing you know, it just, it turned into a, I think we raised $135,500 for the neighborhood Longhorn program. 
And so now we're going back and we do it again. And, and I've already got five other matching offers. Um, so we're at 60 confirmed, 60,000 confirmed, um, including my athletic director. And, 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 and that's really special. Uh, him, Niall Maxwell, Dr. Cunningham, our former president, um, you know, just to name a few, have already pledged um, matching if we can get 10,000, which is so special, man. I mean, that, that's really cool. And, um, and, and so, but there's also some rumors in the, in the back that there might be another big matching gift, uh, very similar to, to last year that could very well take us into six figures again. And so it's really, a, you know, it's, it's our way of giving back y'all to this community. It's our way of maybe making an impact with our youth. Um, it's, it's trying to, you know, it's trying to walk the walk. Uh, our program trying to walk the walk. We, you know, we, we constantly are imploring our, our student athletes. I mean, I'm constantly uh, trying to teach them to honor the game, respect the game. You'll get out of the game what you put into it. The same is true in life, y'all. And when you, when you, when you think about, you stop worrying what you're getting and you start thinking about what can you do for others you know, when we pray, y'all, we always pray and we probably pray for blessings. How many times do we pray to be a blessing? And and this is an opportunity for us to be a blessing to others. And and I'm so proud of, of what our kids and our program have been able to do for the Neighborhood Longhorn Program. I'm so proud of what this game can do, but now we got to get 10,000 fans. That's the deal. You know, it's not 8,000. It's not 9,500. It's 10,000. If we can get 10,000, then we're going to be able to do something really special. I think we had 12,000 last year when we, when we were trying to get 10, we had 12 in, in, in the Irwin center. So uh, we need 10,000 fans, but we've already had, uh, you know, uh, We've already had someone in our community buy a thousand tickets to give to a thousand kids in our community. And how special is that? I mean, this is what a program, a women's basketball program can do for your community. And this has nothing to do with wins and losses, y'all. This has nothing to do with X's and O's. And so I'm really proud and, and honored to have this opportunity to be a part of it. And I'm excited about it. I, I, I'm really, again, it's a chance for our program to impact the community, to impact young people. And uh, and so it's 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 really special. And I appreciate you guys, you know, covering that and 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 uh, helping us, you know, hopefully achieve the ten thousand in in the arena that night. Yeah. And then, uh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just one more. Um, so you Logic, did you coach. just get up? Did you just get out of the shower? I can't see your face. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the, the kids that you've always coached, you know, you've always put a major emphasis on not only growing them on the court, but as well as off and teaching them things that are just valuable in life. And, you know, your your wife, your daughter have also been a part of coaching and learning to do those sort of things so i guess for your family just kind of what is that sort of knack that you guys have for just wanting to like learn and share and grow with others well i, I just think it's how i was raised um by my mother and father uh, by the colonel um in a christian home um i think it's how we holly and i tried to raise logan and blair um, in the same manner that we were both raised, you know, Holly's dad was a superintendent for 30 years, um, at a real, at, a, at, at, at a small school up in the Northeast corner of Arkansas. You know, we don't know these things y'all, but he'd get up at five in the morning and drive the roads this time of year to make sure that they weren't iced over. So the buses could go pick up the kids, you know, that they were safe for the kids. 
So I, I just think it's, you know, for us, you know, we, we've all, we've always tried to, you know, walk the walk and uh, we're not perfect. We, we certainly aren't, but I think when we've had opportunities to, to try to give back and be a part of a community, we've, we've really embraced that and feel like that's our, our duty and our obligation. So, um, you know, it's, it's part of leadership. My team would tell you, I'm all, I'm constantly talking to them about what's, who are the best leaders in athletics? Who are the best leaders in our world and in our country? It's servant leaders. When you're, when you're a servant leader, you're thinking of others before yourself. You know, who was the greatest servant leader? It's Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. I don't know how many feet y'all washed in your day, but you know, that's the biggest example of being a servant leader. They talk about Brady and how great of a leader he is. Well, he's a great leader because he's worried about the defensive line, not his offensive line that protects him, not his wide receivers that he's throwing to. He's worried about his defensive line, taking care of them, taking care of the deep linebacker. Yeah, he's constantly worrying about everybody. And I think that's what being a leader is all about is when your feet hit the floor in the morning, as a servant leader, you're thinking of others. And so um, we just try to embrace that. Elijah, we're not perfect, uh, but we certainly try to try to do that the best we can. And, uh, and so uh, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Thank you. Uh, let's wrap it up with Danny. Go ahead. Uh, Vic, since it is alumni weekend, um, kind of thinking back at your time at A&M and, I guess Mississippi State, since you played Texas a couple of times, was there a Longhorn who you hated playing um, when you were working at those other schools? Well, when I was at a and it was Tiffany Jackson. She was just, you know, really, really tough and and uh, um, just a really difficult matchup, you know, uh, to have a player her size and had the ball handling skills that she had um, was really uh, a tough matchup. I tell you the other one that was a tough matchup when we played here. Uh my first time when we came here from Mississippi State was Brianna, and I'm 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 drawing a blank with her last name, but she was a, a small, she was a three-four player like Audrey. She could play the four, but was an a athletic guard like a three-player. And she was really a tough, hard-nosed matchup. And I believe she shut down Victoria. Victoria went five for 20 that night. We got beat. 54 48 in a bloodbath, a real defensive battle, but Victoria went five for 20 for us. And I think she, she ended up really hurt, you know, Gardner in, in, in handling this. So, um, Brianna Taylor, is that it, coach? Probably, yeah. And, and so those were just a couple, um, you know, that were really, really competitive kids that were really difficult, uh, matchups for us. I think, you know, coaches 2003 team that went to the final four, Danny, we played them when I was at Arkansas in the second round of the NCAA tournament. And uh, that whole team, man, that was a, a, a really special team. And they beat the crap out of us in Cincinnati. I mean, they, I think they beat us 25 in the second round. And, and that's how good they, they were way better than we were at Arkansas. But they they were really good. And of course, they went on to the final four that year. And they they had so many good players, had big wings. Of course, they had tremendous five player inside that that, that was just really hard to deal with. So um there's some kids over the years that have been really difficult to play against here at Texas. And uh um, you know, Again, I know the history here. I know who those kids are. I've had to play against them. Some of them I had to play against. Some I had, didn't have to play against. And uh, and so uh, I just have a real appreciation for them. Um, Shaley, how nice was it for you to get a couple days off this week and presumably get a couple days off next week with the, with the bye? Just kind of how good is that rest at this point of the season? Yeah, I mean, breaks are super important for us you know um mentally and physically it's nice to be able to have an extra day off and I feel like it's going to help us um in the long run I feel like 
you know, going, we had three straight games um, and then coming home, I feel like we were all just like super exhausted, especially after that loss. Um, we didn't play our best. Um, obviously we lost. So, I mean, we just got a chip on our shoulders now and we're ready to play, um, getting ready to play West Virginia. Corey? Hey, Shaylee. Uh, just wanted to piggyback on what Coach Vic was just talking to us about. He was saying, you know, with everything y'all have been through, if you would have asked him in December that y'all would be tied for first in the conference, he wouldn't have believed you. And so it, does it mean more that everything y'all have been through and on the injuries and stuff like that, y'all still tied for first? Is that – that means something to y'all and know that like this team can really achieve something great. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it just proves that all our hard work we've put in, you know, through the summer and um, through the season that it's paying off. Um, and we, we work our butts off and, you know, whether it's in practice or weights or um, in August when we were doing, you know, the track, like at the time we're like, why are we doing this? Um, but, you know, definitely helps us in the long run. Um, and I feel like that's why, you know, we're so good at this, um, at this point is because he pushes his teams like that. Um, Cause he just wants them to be, you know, the best. And right now being tied for first, you know, it means a lot to us. And um, we're trying to take that, that position ourselves. So I, you know, just every single day coming in and working hard as a team is what's super important. Emma, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, so Shaylee, Iowa State the other night held you to only three points when usually you're making double digits each night. Um, I was just wondering, how does that sort of thing motivate you in practice and kind of what do you um, take from that game against Iowa State um, and how do you prepare for next time in that kind of situation? Yeah. Yeah, obviously it wasn't my game. Um, didn't show up to help the team. Um, and I think it was just their zone and like the environment. I've never played there before at Iowa State. And, you know, it was a packed gym, loud fans. Um, uh, obviously we're down Sonia right now, so we didn't have that extra guard. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I have a chip on my shoulder. Um, didn't average what I usually average in points. Um, but yeah, I mean, just coming into practice every single day and um, proving that I can hit those shots um, and just keep working on my shooting, whether it's coming in before practice um, and shooting with the coach or with a manager um, is what I'm doing. Perry, go ahead. Shaley, good morning. So through this process of just the grind and the pressure, and the no days off and just these teams that you're battling against next after West Virginia, you're going to probably battle for the number one spot with Oklahoma. What is your favorite part of this time? What is it about this grind and playing basketball at the university of Texas? Mm -hmm. What do you love most about it? Um, probably the competitiveness and the aggressiveness. Um, every single night, you know, every single game is, up for whoever is wanting to win, you know, you don't know who's going to win. And so that's why the big 12 is, you know, super tough conference. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd say just the competitiveness of the conference and then just like getting after it and being aggressive. And um, I love being able to get on the floor and just, you know, let everything out. Um, and when, when I just step on the court and I just like play my game and not think about anything, that's when I play my best. Thank you. Oh, let's go back to Danny. Um, Shaylee, I don't know if you're giving your teammates tips on free throw shooting, but I'm kind of wondering what's <laughs> the talk in the locker room about the struggles there and just what are your thoughts about that issue? Yeah, I mean, our team has not been doing very well on free throws um, percentage-wise. Um, and every single day we're supposed to shoot 50 free throws and record them so he so coach Vic knows and he's looking at those percentages but I mean it all comes down to you know focus I feel like when I step on that on that free throw line all I'm thinking about is the ball going through the, the net um I feel like my mentality is just very 
pure and straight where I'm, I just know it's going in. Like I step up to the line and I know it's going in. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can get better at that as a team. That's something we really need to work on. Because in the long run, it's, it's probably going to, you know, determine if we win a game or not. So we need to be hitting those free throws. You know, I was kind of laughing to myself a little bit after the TCU game um, during post game when during the press conference, Vic just kind of had a laundry list of things that he didn't like about the game. And he's quizzing the three of you about stuff, um, you know, he wanted you to get better at. And obviously Rory's used to that because she was here last year and she's known Vic for a while. But I'm kind of wondering as a transfer, is this is this what you expected out of Vic? Is this ex did you expect him to push you like this, or has this kind of been a surprise and a learning experience for you this oh, year? Oh yeah, for sure. It's been a big learning curve for me. Um, just jumping in and having to, you know, change my mindset on things and like certain habits I've been doing my whole college career. Um, yeah, it's been it's been hard, but I feel like I've grown as a player um, and I've learned definitely a different side of the game. Um, and he's definitely pushed me, you know, his coaching is not easy and you got to mentally, you know, um, take note of like what he's giving you. You can't take it with, you can't take it personal and you can't listen to the tone. So, um, but I definitely feel like I've become a better player. Or uh, picking back and off of Danny's question is, is there a, a person on the staff that kind of, counteracts Vic for y'all like is it Blair is it Sydney like there's someone telling y'all like I know he's that way but like it's okay like y'all are playing good y'all are still tired for first is there somebody in that yeah yeah always you know he'll he'll yell at you and then if you come and sit on the bench like they'll just kind of like piggyback on like what he said and just say like it's okay like don't take it personal like or and give us like some extra feedback but yeah the coaches are always doing that um and just trying to lift up lift us up Anything else for Trailer? Danny, do you have another one? Yeah, just one more. Um, you all, you all obviously saw West Virginia less than three weeks ago. Just kind of wondering your thoughts on this matchup and um, kind of what you saw from them in Morgantown a couple weeks ago. Yeah, um, I mean, I think we just need to, you know, punch first. Um, we definitely know that we can beat them. Um, but like I said, you never know who's going to win. Um and so I feel like we definitely need to focus on um, their guards and their three-point shooting um, and also our defense. I feel like we've been just fouling so much that that needs to stop because um, other team has been shooting lots of free throws um, and also working our hedges and getting back quicker. But, yeah, I mean, we're looking forward to playing them again. Hopefully we can um, get another win. Let's go. Last one, Terry. Yeah, you know, so Shaley, this is fascinating because Coach Schaefer talked about against Iowa State, you guys had won, you know, from the second quarter on. You guys really beat them. It was really that first quarter. So I'm curious in your style of play or in the way you play, how much of this is basketball and how much is it is strategy and, and maybe a chess match, right? You have to outsmart or outthink the opponent. And it's not necessarily basketball always. It's mental yeah I definitely do feel like it's um that game was mental I feel like certain matchups um you have to think about and if we keep running the same play we can't keep doing that um I feel like we were doing that a lot because um, they were just running that two three right and so um definitely during the game we got to decide like what we're going to do to break that zone um, and I feel like we didn't do that very well as a team. Um, Matchups, we just we just couldn't stop them on defense. Ashley Jones, we were just letting them get to the basket super easily. So um, hopefully we can work on that and get better.